So, uh, just for the sake of clarity, really, I'm just going to glue this up so that you can uh, sort of see what's going on. And uh, so I'm just going to run a bit of blue along. And of course you end up with a blue finger. Okay, so now we are ready to start taking our first cut. He's advanced the uh, cross slide until we just get a very fine scratch cut. There you can see, or hopefully you can see, scoring a very tiny line, okay? I'm now going to set my uh, resettable dial indicator to zero. So now I'm going to just wind back away from zero. I'm going to wind my tool into the, uh, the, the, the recess which will be the start position for my thread. So from here onwards, I know I'm at zero, so I need to wind that to into zero. And zero is my scratch cut position. So now I'm going to take my first pass and I'm going to be using the thread dial indicator. So off it goes, this will be my scratch cut will hopefully scratch it all the way down the uh, down the thread move that in and as you can see there's a tiny thread actually it's a very fine scratch cut the important thing here is that uh, when the when the cutting tool reaches the end of the thread and comes into the uh, the recess which has been turned, which is, uh, you know, the inner diameter, I need to be able to disengage the half nuts on the lead screw. So here we go. And just somewhere there, we disengaged it. And then I want to back off from my zero point. So then I can wind the cross slide Sorry, not the cross slide. Wind the uh, carriage back to my starting point again. At this point, then, I want to be able to put that put back to the zero mark. So I wind it back onto the zero, and that basically puts me back in exactly the same position I was before. So now I've done a scratch cut, and I want to be able to advance the cut. So now by using the, the uh, top slide, which is now set at obviously 27 and a half degrees, I'm gonna advance the cut into the, into the job. And I'm gonna go, for this first cut, I'm just gonna take a five thou cut. So I've advanced uh, the top slide by five thou. So I'm now just waiting for my uh, indicator to come back round. So I can advance on the one or the three, so down we go onto the three and it should theoretically follow the uh, the pattern of the the same line basically when it got to the end again I disengage the half nuts so I now need to remember to wind back off so the idea of this is you must remember to back off, wind it back, it doesn't touch anything, and wind it back in to the zero point. But the nice thing is it's only the zero point every time. And then the cut is of course added via the top slide across. So this time I'm going to go for a ten of foul cut. I'm now waiting for my dial indicator to come round. There's the dial indicator going around. So number one is the one I did my first cut on. And because I'm using a um, 11 thread experience, which is an uneven number, I can engage on either number one or the opposite number, which is obviously number three. So I'm just gonna wait for number one to come around. And then as soon as it does, I will engage the uh, half nut uh, lever. And hopefully we'll get a a cut so it's just coming around now and just just before it gets there you start to sort of kind of feel it and you get the engagement so now it comes across follows our line nicely 
Yeah, 10 that close, it's not too bad. I'm just going to give it a little bit of blue with them, actually. Just in case. Try not to use the loo while I'm filming because uh, I don't wanna really want to splash the lens. I have to get the camera quite close to be able to get the focus. But there you see a nice, nice curly bit of swarf coming off. So as soon as that reaches off, another couple of rotations. And off it goes. And then disengage, disengage the half knot. And then of course again, wind that back. And obviously you have to go a little bit more every time because you are increasing. So as long as you come back to a position where you're not going to damage the thread. Re-advance back to the zero position. Okay. And then advance again. See. Advance again with the um, top slide. So this time I'll go another ten thou. Remember if you if you are cutting steel, you don't want to go fifteen thou. It's only because this is aluminium. And then again, I'll wait for my number to come round. But there you go, nice and make sure it engages fully all the way down. You don't want anything going wrong or slipping. So a little bit of uh, a little bit of cutter, cutting glue. If you have a bit of trouble with any swarf, obviously never use your fingers, but you can always use a pair of pliers or something like that. So I've stopped the rotation as it's come off the thread. So again, we just keep repeating the process. So uh, we take our cross slide back. I'll just come back at 100 now again. And just clear it, yep. Yeah. And then we wind that back in, back to our zero point. Which is just... There. Advance this by, say, what should we go this time? Yeah, we'll go, we'll go uh, another 15 now, I think. That seems to be a, a bad number in this instance. So, here we go again. So we've come in again, another 15 now on the direction, on the angle, same angle as the cutter. So again, we're waiting for, haven't really shown this bit much, have I? So we're waiting for the number one, so just engage on the number one. Obviously, of course, when I'm engaged, that stops because the thread is, uh, let's push that in, make sure that's right. The thread is engaged onto the heart, onto the, um, the lead screw. So as it rotates, it's also rotating at the same speed it's moving in, so it doesn't actually move. I find these bottles pretty good actually. They're uh, sold on eBay as uh, um, like tattooists water wash bottles and it's got a pipe through to the bottom and it's, it's nice and easy just to apply uh, any coolant you need. And you can have different bottles, they're only cheap, a couple of pound for like uh, well, about a pound each I think they are. And I can't see this on. I'm going to disengage there. I've disengaged a bit early, actually. Anyway, that'll be okay. Uh, let's just remove that swarf. But yeah, the bottles are are good because, like I say, for about five quid, you can get three or four of these, and you can have one for your suds, one for your paraffin. Paraffin probably uh, would be a better um, cutting uh, solution, or it is a good cutting solution for aluminium. So um, back off your cutter, bring it back to your start position, put your cutter back to the zero point and then advance the tongue, which this time I'm just going to go, I'm getting, we're getting pretty close now to the actual uh, internal diameter of the thread, very very close, so I'm just going to go a little bit at a time, again I'm going to wait for the uh, thread dial indicator to get to the one position. I'm not going to use the three position. And there we are. Make sure it's firmly down, engaged. 
think I've already put some coolant on. And here we go for another another turn of the thread. So as you can see, it's just peeling off nicely. It's just coming off that one edge of the cutter. Whether you can see that. But you, you'll also notice that the uh, the blue is disappearing because obviously the tops of the threads, the peaks of the threads, are now getting reduced as we getting closer to size. Rewind the uh, cross slide, come back 100 down, just check it's not uh, a lovely bit of swarf, look at that. So rewind that back to your position. A bit of crap on the end there. And we're getting pretty close now. So. Bring your zero point back in, and it's just scratching, just scratching. Just, just made a tiny, tiny line there. So I think we're actually at uh, almost at thread depth. So all I'm going to add now on the uh, on the cross, uh, the oh god, I always get these mixed up, don't I? I'm useless at this. The top slide. I'm just going to add a couple of foul. So this is going to be a very fine cut. Still looks like there's a bit to come off the top, but we'll see how this uh, how this runs out. So it's just just turning off the last couple of threads, and it's into the void. So I stop it there. It is just scratching that surface. So. For me, that tells me that the thread is actually cut. So I'll now be able to turn it off. Okay, so uh, hopefully, uh, get your get your Whitworth um, thread thread gauge, and I don't know whether you can see that on the camera, but it should now be a pretty good fit. And as long as the teeth reach the bottom and it's not bottoming out. That should be a pretty good thread. Yeah, that, that looks pretty good. I think that'll be satisfactory. So, all I've got to do now is uh, try and get a nut on this damn thing. <laughs> 